feel it, and I just can. begin to just worship. Don't worry about nobody around you. Because it, guess what? This is your it, time with God. It, I, I want you to play like this. That you in your own prayer time right now. I can see it. It's just you and God it, right now. It, I can. Oh, hallelujah. I can see it. I can hear it. I can feel it. I can. Hallelujah. You can hear it. I can't explain it, but I know that it's major. I can't explain it, but I know that it's major. I can't explain it, but I know that it's major. I can't explain it, but I know that it's major. I can see, I can see, I can hear, I can feel it, I can. Come on, I can see, I can hear, I can. Well, the presence of God is all around this place. I can see it, I can hear it, I can feel it, I can hear it, I can feel it, I can't explain it, I can't explain it, but I know that it's major, I can't explain it, but I know that it's major, I can't explain it, I can't explain it, but I know that it's major, I can't explain it, I can't explain it, but I know
believe that. Clap your hands and give a praise up in here. So I thank God for the opportunity. I know the song doesn't stop, but see, I want y'all to understand the powerfulness of God. I want you to realize that God is powerful. God is, God is one of, he want to come in and intervene in your situation right now. Regardless of what you're going through, finance, trouble in your home, whatever it is you're going through, God said, I want to intervene right now. But it calls for us to think deeper in God. It calls for us to come on and just begin to accept what God is wanting to do in our life. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Preparing me for my next move. That's what you're doing right there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God's trying to burst some things out of you. you will, you will come through. See, a lot of y'all in here pregnant right now. Just like you did, and God said, there's about to be a birth in this table. God, I need you to show me your sign. All that pressure you've been, so you've been feeling, all this thing, like everything's been coming against you. He said, let's step in the contraction that you've been having. Because God said, I'm about so to burst something out of you right now. All I have is but it requires for you to be God. I know you won't let me die. Come on, come on, let's give God some praise today. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise today. Because, see, when you look back over everything you've been through, man, when you look back over everything you've been through, 
everything you encountered, everything that you had to go through, you see there was nothing but the grace of God that has still allowed you the opportunity to be in his presence. So we thank you right now, God. We thank you. We want to welcome you here to Dream Big Leadership. Amen. Hallelujah. First, we want to welcome the Holy Spirit and thank the Holy Spirit for coming inside this place and doing what he do best. Because, see, every time I get into the presence of God, I'm expecting God to do something great in my life. Not just in mine, but in everyone that's here. Everybody that's in the atmosphere. Because I believe that when we begin to charge the atmosphere up, then we put a demand on God. And see, we... I think that's where we stop as believers. We stop putting a demand on the kingdom. When God's saying, all you got to do is demand me. We can't be timid when it comes to doing things for God. We have to put a demand on God's kingdom to come here on earth so God can be able to see, so God can be able to use us to do what he needs to be done in the kingdom of God. And I promise you, when you're in the will of God, when you're in the plans of God, guess what God moves like that before. There's nothing too small, too big that you can ask God while you're in the presence. And I believe that by being in the presence of God, God will grant whatever it is that you petition. Amen, amen. So once again, we welcome you here to Dream Big Leadership. Where we are training up leaders for a time like this. And we want to take this time to, if you can, just take out your phones and share the message, share the live on today. Because I'm expecting God to do something great, not just up in here, but also to those that are tuned in on Facebook. Because we want to welcome you into this sanctuary. I want to welcome you into the presence of God because I believe that whatever is going on here that you can experience that same thing even on life in the presence of your home amen amen because there's been time that I haven't been able to make it but because I was tuned in what was taking place in the, here I had an encounter in my place at home as well. See, I don't put a I don't put a limit on what God can do. I don't put him in a box. Because if you say go, that's what we have to go. Amen, amen, amen. So once again, we welcome you here today. And we thank you for taking your time to come out because you could have been anywhere, but you decided to come and fellowship with us on today and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, y'all might as well just keep standing. Amen. We're going to go into our decrees. I want to share something with you. Sometimes if we have a little context, it helps us to get in the mood to say our decrees because we want to say them with some um. So I looked up and you can do it yourself as well. But when you look up the definition of a decree, I want to share it with you. It says an official order issued by a legal authority. Well, we know who our legal authority is, right? To decree some. It's not just, we just saying it's like, you know, kids say the Pledge of Allegiance at the school or something. But it's, it's decreeing something with some authority. And we know who an authority is over our lives. So when you put that in the context of it, it helps you understand why we're saying these things. Amen. I know it may seem monotonous. I know we may say it every Sunday. But we got to say it with some authority and some power that we are not just saying it, but we're believing it. Amen. Amen. Does that help y'all out? Yeah, no, it helps me. I got to have context behind things, so that, that, that helps me out. Amen. All right, we're going to go into these, and we're going to say them together, and we're going to say them loud and proud. Amen. Y'all ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Dream Big Leadership Church 2022. The year of divine encounters. I have heard of thee by hearing of the ear, 
But now my eyes see it thee. Job 42 and 5. Y'all, I don't know if y'all realize it, but we're going into the ninth month of 2022. So I want you to stop, you know, we stop and pause it, you know, quarterly maybe and reflect back and see, have you had any divine encounters in this year of 2022? I think as we're going into this ninth month, it's a good time to reflect because we're transitioning one month's end and another month is beginning. Amen. Reflect back and ask yourself, have you had any divine encounters this year with God? Amen. And if so, please thank him for that. Amen. All right. Foundation scripture. Y'all ready? All right, one, two, three. And the things thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Second Timothy 2 and 2. Woo! Amen. Our strategy, reach, teach, train, and lead an army of biblical leaders who will take their place of dominion in this generation. Y'all look up what the word dominion means. Amen. All right, we got a new one. This is new today, y'all, so y'all bear with me. We're going to read this one together, but I have not read with this one, so we're going we gonna to learn this one together. Amen. Oh, Lord, I'm going to have to look up here because I can't see. Amen. It's on the back and the front screen, y'all, for those who are visually impaired like myself. Amen. Our new territory. So, what, guys, what this is about is we're claiming new territory. We're claiming a new building because we're growing in God's house, and we need a new building. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to read this together on the count of three. Y'all ready? Oh, y'all ready? Oh, okay. All right. And. Dream big, called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless us indeed and enlarge our coast in the Shreveport, Bossier, and that thy hand might be with our church, and that thou wouldest keep us from evil, that it may not grieve us. And God granted Dream Big Leadership Church that which they requested. First Chronicles 4 and 10. Woo! Amen. All right, y'all ready for the vision acronym? All right, ready? What's the first letter? D, developing faithful men, women, and children to become leaders who will effectively and efficiently disciple others. Woo! Next letter. R, reaching lost souls starting within our community with the belief that there are called people who desire to be trained. Woo! Next letter. E, establishing ourselves as set apart because we are people who experience God encounters, fellowship, impartation, transformation, and signs, wonders, and miracles. Next letter, A, aiming to please God rather than man, which requires a higher commitment than those around us. And last but not least, this is always my favorite one, M, making sure we always put others before ourselves and helping to bear the infirmities of the weak. These have been your decrees. Amen. Come on, let's give Sister Candace another hand clap of praise. Amen, amen, amen. How many of you know that the word of God says, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Amen. Well, it's offering time. Oh, come on, come on. Come on, we can do better than that. We're talking about giving to the kingdom. I'm going to say it again. It's offering time. 
Oh, glory be to God. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I'm going to read, amen, a scripture in your hearing, Matthew 6. Amen. amen. Chapter, chapter 6, I'm sorry, verse 19 through 21. And it reads, do not lay up. Give me something to solve, please. Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Watch this here. Whether or not moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Amen. For where your treasures are, Ooh, yes. there will your heart be also. Amen. How many of you know that when it comes to giving, it's a heart thing? Yes. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that it's not just a routine thing or a ritual thing that we do or that it's not done out of necessity? Amen. It's not done with somebody giving us, making us do it or telling us to do it. Amen. But we give from a place out of our hearts. Amen. See, I, I love I love how Jesus set it up because he said where your treasures are, there will your heart be. So watch this here. Where you put your treasures at, that's where your heart is going to be dedicated to. See, see what treasures in the scripture also mean what you value, what you value. So, so if you value something, it's important to you. Amen. Amen. So what you value, your actions is going to follow that. Your behavior is going to follow that. So it's important that whatever we have, we think on heavenly things and not just earthly things amen so it's better in the bible says what well, it is better to give than to receive amen 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 at this time i'm gonna give you a few seconds to prepare your seed amen hallelujah glory be to god amen and i like to remind the people of god that worship is a is a i'm sorry giving is a worship yeah it's a worship amen it's a worship it's, it's something that we do, amen, because it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. I promise it's not just a Sunday morning thing. Amen, amen. We live to give. Well, I need to put that on a t-shirt. We live to give. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. So if, if you have finished preparing your seed, amen, I'm just going to ask that you stand again. Amen. We're going to do our word faith confession. Our seed faith confession. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And if, and, if, and if you're believing God for something major, what we like to do here is, is we like to give you the opportunity to write on the back of your envelope one to three things that you're believing God for because our leaders, they take those envelopes home and they pray over those. And they come in agreement with you. On what you're believing God for. Amen. Amen. So just take a little second to do that. and Amen. And we're going to stand. Amen. And we're going to do our seed faith confession. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are y'all excited to give on this morning? <laughs> Amen. It's a little quiet in here. It's a little quiet. Come on. Listen, the Bible says God love a what? A cheerful giver. Amen. So guess what? I'm going to give you a little second here to get cheerful. One, two, three. Come on. Give God a shout of praise. Amen. Amen. Come on. Let's do it one more time. On the count of three. One, two, three. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. The Bible said it is God love a cheerful a giver. Amen. 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 Come on. One more time for the Holy Ghost. One, two. Two, three, give God a shout. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 All right. If you can turn your attention to the seed faith confession. Amen. We're going to read it together. Amen. And read it with some with some conviction. Amen. On the count of three. One, two, three. Father, I honor you with my substance and the first fruits of all that you have given me. I bring to you my offering in worship and plant it in your kingdom as a seed of blessing according to your word. All these blessings shall come upon me and overtake me. Oh no, I just heard this. Somebody need to stop right there and let that process. All these blessings shall, shall do what? 
shall do what? Because I am a sower. I expect a harvest in my life in every situation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, water your seat with a praise. The urchins are coming. Amen. At this time with the receptacle. Amen. You can start from the back. Amen. On both sides. And come plant your seed at this time. Amen. And I did want to mention we have other ways to give electronically. Amen. Cash out. Uh, Tithely. Givelify. Uh, you can also give by way of mailing it in as well. We don't think that's too old, Foggy. Amen. So on the screen, there is ways that you can give. Amen. Other than in person. Hallelujah. Have everyone gotten an opportunity to give? Hallelujah. All right. Amen. 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 Thank y'all. Amen. Amen. We're going to, we're going to, at this time, pray over our seed. Amen. Just scratch your hand towards the receptacle, please. Amen. 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 Father God, we just thank you. How many of you thankful that you have a seed to give? How many of you know that the unemployment rate has went up? How many of you know that we got homeless people out here? Amen. But God has been faithful to us. He has been faithful to us. And he's given us an opportunity to plant seed into his kingdom. Amen. Where he already promised that it would not rust or be destroyed. Amen. And Father God, we just thank you for that opportunity. God, we speak increase over these seeds. God, I decree and I declare that these seeds go forward in the spirit realm and break forward doors that was, shall be opened that no man can shed. God, I speak increase even in their finances. Increase in their relationships. God, I thank you that favor shall surround them like a shield. God, I decree and I declare over their life, oh God, that they lack nothing. I decree and I declare that their baskets are full and running over. I decree and I declare in Jesus' name, oh God, that they shall not just be blessed, but be a blessing yes, God. in this city, in their families, in the communities, to the ministry in Jesus' mighty name. We bind the spirit of stinginess and we decree, we declare that they shall give with the generosity by way of your spirit. And God, I pray that in their doing and in everything that they do, that you will be glorified in it, that you will get all the glory, yes. all the honor and all the praise yes. in Jesus name. In Jesus Name. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. Come on, give God a shout of praise for your seed. Yes. Some of y'all seeds are finna go forth and bring you back a harvest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of y'all seeds are finna go forth and change some things and rearrange some things in your life. Amen. Amen. Because the kingdom of God is not just in talk, but it is power unto salvation. Amen. It comes with authority. Amen. Amen. Well, it's praise and worship time. Amen. We're going to just set the atmosphere and y'all going to help us do that. Amen. Hallelujah. We're just going to set the atmosphere a little bit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So at this moment, amen, I like to, I like to get in a posture and a mindset of worship because when it comes to praise and worship, the enemy can try to quench our spirit. He can try to quench our worship. He can try to quench our praise. So at this moment, amen, I just want to ask you to help us set the atmosphere. Amen. And I just want you to begin to get your mind on Christ and begin to lift your hands and just begin to adore him. How many of you love him on this morning? Come on, if you love him, then give him worship. If you love him, then give him the fruit of your lips. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh God, we adore you. I 
have lost our worship some of us have lost our prayer life and God is saying I want to fill you again I want to revive you again all you have to do is lift your hands and ask God to fill me with your spirit fill me again with your passion oh God Worship him. Come on, open your own to mouth. Praised, Come on, God. give him the fruit of your lips. We worship. Oh, hallelujah. His presence in this place. Just I want you to get in a posture of receiving. Just receive what he has for you right now in this moment. Yes. See, the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise you, the Lord. But those who have a relationship understand that worship is personal. <laughs> Come on, a few more seconds and we're going to, we're going to keep it going.
Anamasekada Yeshiko Nanama. Spirit break out in this place right now. Spirit break out in this room right now. Because you are our Father. Come on, worship Him. Worship Him. God, we honor you right here. You are Father God. Okay. 
Give God a praise right there. How many of you want to see the kingdom here? For the Bible says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, how many of you want God to fill you up on this morning? God, I'm at my lowest. God, I just need more of you. God, fill me up, oh God, in this season, in this moment.
God, fill me up until I do right. Fill me up, oh God, until I be the bigger person. God, fill me up with your spirit. Uh-huh. Come on, let them say it. Fill me up. Uh-huh. Let them sing. God, this is our cry today. God, this is what we need. Say, fill me up. Till I overflow. Somebody give him praise and worship. Somebody give him praise and worship. Come on, somebody release a sound in the heavens. God, fill us up till we overflow. God, fill us up till we overflow. And running over. And I decree and declare the word of God that you shall have a hunger and a thirst Thank you, God. In, the in the name of Jesus so that God may fill you up yes. until you overflow yes, God. and running over hallelujah. hallelujah come on give God another hand clap of praise amen love flow permeate permeate all my soul love of God love of God overflow Permeate all my soul. Love of God. Love of God. Overflow. Permeate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody soul. here. Love say, love of God. Love of Come God. on, pull it out of your belly. Overflow. I need him to do some things in my life. What about you? Hey, come on. Sometimes you got to lay there a little bit longer. Hey. Make it personal. Make it personal. Love of God. Love of God. Just a congregation. Just a congregation. Yes, come on. Let him hear your voice. Just a congregation. Come on. Yes. Yes. Come on. Come on. Tell him love. What is it to you? Come on. Sing a love song to him. Glory. Come on. Just the left side. Yes, come on, push it. He loves the sound. Yes. Come on again, this side. Come on, push it out. Yes. You and him. Hallelujah. Come on, the right side. Come on, all of God's people. Love of God, yeah. Overflow, permeate. Oh, slow it down a little bit. Love of God, yeah. Overflow. Glory to God, Father God, we thank you today. Father God, we come before you today, Lord God. We're praises, Lord God. Well, we are singing out to you, Lord God. Father, we don't need any rocks to cry out for us, oh God. We sing praises unto you ourselves with our own mouths, oh God. With our whole hearts, Lord God. Father, we come before you today, Lord God, with praise, adoration, and thanksgiving, Lord God. Just thanking you for who you are, Lord God. Loving on you like never before, Lord God. We say yes to your love, oh God. We say yes. 
yes to your overflowing, oh God. We say yes to all that you have for us on today, Lord God. We come to you, Lord God, in humility, Lord God. We come to you, Father God, with bowed heads, Lord God. Humbled unto you, Lord God. Laying it all at the altar, Lord God. Leaving it at your feet, Lord God. Father God, we don't want to take anything back with us, Lord God. Anything that we came here with, Lord God, we're leaving it with you, Lord God. We're trusting you, Lord God, on today, Lord God. For God, I live and for God, I die, oh God. If you can't do it for us, Lord God, we know it can't be done, Father God. So, Father God, we're deciding to take this step, Lord God, and to take that chance, Lord God. Just like you took a chance on us, Lord God. When you chose us, you could have caused us to even be 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 destined for hell lord god but you chose us in the family of the beloved you chose us as your friend you said yes to us oh god even when everybody else said no when everybody else turned their backs on us lord god you said yes my daughter you said yes my son you said i know you did this i know you went over there but still yes 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 to you once i accepted you i never turned you away i am here right now I'm not going anywhere. No matter what's going on, I when you when I chose you, you were yet a filthy rag. Don't you think I knew what was going to happen? But yet I still choose you. Yes, I say yes. I am here the same God yesterday, today, and forever. I am the only one who can guarantee you forever. All of the other people who decide and tell you that they can do these things and that they're able to do this for next year or 10 years no i am the only guarantee father god we thank you lord god that you are a guarantee in our lives lord god we thank you oh god that you are filling us lord god for those places lord god those hidden places lord god those places where they are born so god fill us like never before oh god father god we receive your infilling oh god Fill me. Fill us, oh God. Come on. Come on. Let his spirit saturate you. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me. Come on. What do you need him to fill you with? Call, call on him this morning. Come on, this is not a time to spectate, but it's a time to open up your mouth and call out to the God that you need this morning. What do you need from him? Do you need healing in your body? Do you need healing in your mind? Do you need healing in your spirit? Do you have a heart and heart? Are you lonely? Are you depressed? Are you hurt? Call on the God that you're needing this morning. Oh, come on, fill us. Fill us. Come on. God said, I'm pouring. He said, I'm pouring. I just need you to receive it. I'm pouring. I need you to receive it. I want you to have overflow. I want you to live abundantly. I want you to have the final things in life. I want you to have a 2023, 2022 vehicle. Come on. God can. He said, I need you to believe a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. Just a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. Just a little bit more. Stretch that faith. Uh huh. Where you told yourself no already, he said, I need you to stretch. I need you to stretch. I need you to stretch. He said, He's unbreakable. He's unmovable. I need you to stretch. Because no matter how far you stretch, I can always reach. I'm already there. Stretch. God is calling this morning. If there is someone in here who don't remember getting filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the gentleman that guides us. 
He's the gentleman that has that when we have discernment. He's the gentleman that lets us know the direction we need to take or don't take. If you don't remember getting filled with the Holy Spirit, yes, you're saved. But if you don't remember that other part, there's a whole nother experience in God that you're missing. And I encourage you to slip up your hand if you don't remember that time. Because God wants to fill you. God wants to fill you. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Father God, I thank you that we receive it on today, Lord God. That we don't have to rely on the Spirit to just come on us, Lord God, but that he resides in us, Lord. Father God, we thank you that we are filled with your love, with your love and grace, oh God, with your power, Lord God, that you have given us, Lord God. God, we're nothing without you. God, we're nothing without you. God, we're nothing without you. God, we are nothing without you. God, we are nothing without you. We're nothing without you, oh God. I'm nothing without you. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. I'm nothing without you. Come on, just lift up the voices in the place this morning. We're nothing without his grace. We're nothing without his love. We're nothing without him. God, we can't go on without you. We don't want to take another step without you, oh God. Without you leading our steps, Lord God. Without you directing our path. God, we can't do it without you. We can't do it in ourselves, Lord God. For we give ourselves over to you, oh God. I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Hallelujah. I'm nothing without you. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah all over the building. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah unto the Lord. Come on, we don't need any music, just hallelujah, sing it unto the Lord. Your own voice unto him. Sing worship unto him. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we thank you, Lord God. For the man of God, Lord God, that is coming forth on today, Lord God. For your vessel, Lord God. We speak right now, Lord God, that he says only the words that you give him to say, Lord God. Use him right now, Lord God. Work through him right now, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that the word of God shall not fall short into the ground, Lord God. But that, that our hearts and our ears are blood-tipped and ready to receive all that you have for us, Lord God. God, we're not looking a word about the man. Lord God but we receive what you have for us Lord God Father God we're ready to eat oh God we're ready to drink oh God of your word Lord God we our spirits are open Lord God and we're ready somebody say God I'm ready God I'm ready hallelujah we're ready for you oh God Father God let your spirit remain in this place Lord God Thank Remain in our hearts, Lord God, Jesus. as we receive the growth and the bread of life Thank from you on today. You, Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank Hallelujah. You, Amen. Come on, somebody say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Last time, Hallelujah. 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 Come on, say hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. I say, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. You're so worthy, Lord. Lord, you're worthy. 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 Worthy of my praise. Lord, you're worthy. right there. Sometimes he just makes us say ooh. (laughs) Yes. Go behind the veil. Sometimes we should just have worship sessions with the Lord. Nails in his feet. Thank you, Jesus. Beaten unrecognized. Thank you, Jesus. Squatch high and wide. Thank you, Jesus. The forgiver of my sins. Thank you, Jesus. The healer of my Lord, we bless. Lord, we bless you. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get a little bit softer. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, just the congregation.
Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. We love you. Lord, 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 we love you. Come on, say, we adore you. We adore you. Do me a We adore you. Do anybody adore him? We adore you so adorable. We adore you. Say we adore you, God. We adore you. We adore you. We adore you. We adore you, God. We adore you. We adore you. Come on, keep singing. We adore you. Lord, we adore you. Come on, last time, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. It's the highest praise, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord this morning for his presence and for who he is. Thank you, Jesus.
Come on, can we bless the name of the Lord this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. I know you can do better than that, but this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice. We shall be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You know, I know that we are in a day and time where coming into the house of God and the congregation is almost taboo. And it's almost obsolete because we have been fooled and tricked into thinking that we can get everything that we need in isolation and at home. But there are some things that you can only get in fellowship with other believers. It's a reason the word of God says, forsake not the assembly of yourselves as the manner of some is. Right? There is a... Uh, there is a dynamic of God's presence that comes when we exalt his name together. When we praise his name together. There's something that you can't get up under your cover or your sofa and in your kitchen by yourself. In isolation without the saints. So we thank God for his presence this morning. We thank God for the Holy Spirit this morning. I would not want to show up to church if the Holy Spirit did not show up. Amen. Can we just honor the Holy Spirit this morning? I know we honor Jesus, and we should. But there is a third person of the Godhead who deserves to be honored. He's the administrator. He's the orchestrator of everything that God desires to happen in your life. It does not happen without the Holy Spirit. It does not happen without the Holy Ghost. It does not happen without Him. So we reverence you, Holy Spirit. We know that you kept us last night. We know that there's unseen forces right now standing outside of this door that desires to still our destiny. But you, Holy Spirit, have surrounded us like a shield. You've covered us. Even when we were helpless, Holy Spirit, you've been there for us. And so we thank you this morning. We, ignore, we acknowledge your Lordship, Holy Spirit. So we thank you that you've come into the building this morning. And you've come to see about us. One more time, let's give the Holy Spirit a hand of praise. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for all of the leaders who came this morning and opened us up, opened our hearts and minds up. You can be seated to what God wants to do in the place today. Thank God for my wife, Pastor T. Can y'all give Pastor T a hand of praise? 16 years married to the same woman, and I bless God for it. Amen. Amen. I want to... Um, share some information with you today. First of all, I want to honor the Holy Spirit for last Sunday. He just came in here and just wrecked the place. Hallelujah. I'd be mad because I'd be wanting to preach. You know, and I'd be like, God, you know I'd be wanting to preach. And he's like, this ain't your show. This ain't your place. So I appreciate the testimonies of those of you all who had encounters with God um, on Sunday. Y'all sharing that with me. And so that's what we'll believe in God for, for this year that God would give us encounters with him. If you do not have encounters with God, you will wane in your Christian faith. If you do not have encounters with God, you will, you will give up on your Christian faith. It's just a matter of time. You have to see the person that you're in a relationship with some shape, form, or fashion, or you will walk away from that relationship. It's just a matter of time. You can be religious. You can sing, jump, shout, preach, and do all of that. But you may be physically present, but you will be spiritually and emotionally absent. So we always contend for the presence of God. God is real. He's not an aberration. He's not wind with a tail. He's not a cloud with an eyeball. He is a person. And he manifests himself to those who seek after him, to those who are looking for him. Amen. So we thank him every time that he shows up because he does not have to. He is sovereign. So uh, last week I told you all that, um, that God had been impressing upon, upon my heart and in my spirit for the past couple of months. This mantra 
and this message that we are not alone. Somebody say, we are not alone. I was in my prayer time and in my meditation time, and God was speaking to me and saying, Antoine, everything that you're going through, everything that you have been through, I just want to remind you that I was with you the whole time. And it won't be any different for the second half of your life. I will always be with you. And he kept speaking it and speaking it and speaking it. And I asked God, I said, God, I keep hearing this message. He said, it's not just for you, but it is a message that I want you to take to my people to remind them that they are not alone. Amen. 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 Can you say that again? I'm not alone. So I'm grateful for those of you all I've been watching on social media. Y'all have been hashtagging that. Listen, that is not something just cute that we say. That is biblical integrity. That is God's promise to his children that we are not alone. So I want to uh, open up a couple of things today. Listen, I'm really going to be doing some teaching today, so you're going to need something to write with. If you didn't bring your pen, pull out your lipstick, you're going to need something to record what we're talking about today because y'all know by nature I am a teacher. So I want to, uh, uh, my, my, really my, my, my desire, my love, and my passion is to give the people of God information that you can use and work with outside of this, the four church walls. Amen. It, it does us no good just to come to church and get excited and shout and yell and dance. And all of that's good. God likes that. But for us to walk out of these doors and do not have victory in our own personal lives. Either God is real or he isn't. Either God is powerful or he, or he isn't. Either God is present or he's not. Right. So for us to dance around the mountain and act like God can do stuff that it really can't do is not only foolish, but it's a waste of time. But I know God for myself. And Numbers 23 and 19 says, for God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he has to repent. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. There's never been a promise that he's made that he has not kept throughout the eons of time. Right. So if I know this, if this is the courage of my conviction, if this is my belief system, then I have to find a way to align myself with whatever God has promised me. I have uh, invested. You have invested all of your life into this belief system that we call God, into this entity that we call Jehovah. So we should know his desires, his plans and his wishes for our life. We should know those things Fully, nobody would go to war without knowing the intricacies of their weaponry. Nobody would let somebody supervise their life without knowing their character, without knowing their nature, and without knowing their history. It is only when we get into things like the Christian faith that we hang our stuff, we hang our hat on uh, uh, nonsense uh, like uh, blind faith. And there's no such thing in the Word of God as blind faith. G faith is predicated on God's word. And so the more I know about God's word, the more, I more, the more I know about his nature. The more I know about his nature, the more strength I have to exhibit my, exhibit my faith and receive his principles, his promises, and his word. Amen. Amen. So there's no such thing as blind faith. So I have to become what I call a spiritual archaeologist. I have to... Uh, really take my life and use it to investigate this God who has created me in his image. Uh, I told y'all there were five things that we need to contend for uh, in this year. And the first one is that I really have to develop a serious relationship with God. Not haphazard, not on the fence, not in and out, but I really have to give him everything because there is no way that God will give me his best. There's no way that God will give me everything that he has for me if I'm half-hearted. There's no way if I'm in and out that I'm going to receive everything that I need from God. There is no wife in their right mind, no husband in their right mind that will give you everything that they got, all their money, all their honey, all their time and their resources, and you are in and out of the relationship. But it is only when it comes to God that we think that he is some aloof taskmaster, some genie in a bottle, and we can just kind of bring him any, any, anything, and we can take him in thing. So I told you all uh, that a relationship with God is not cheap. Salvation is free. 
and it is a simple process. But a relationship with God is not cheap. There is no way that God will send his only begotten son to die for, for you and I and then let us enter cheaply into that relationship. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. So one of the, the things that I, I want to really bring out today, and, and I'm not going to get finished with most of this today, but we'll, we'll take a slow journey. One of the things that I want to impress into our heart today is, uh, as we talk about God being with us, is that, um, number one, that God is committed to everybody in this room. God is committed to everyone in this room. God is committed to your children. God is committed to your spouse. God is committed to your parents. And I promise you, the enemy, the enemy will fight that thought the rest of your life. He will make you feel like God is not for you. You will never say it out loud. You will, you will never put it on Facebook. But in the meditation of your heart, you'll say, God, are you really with me? God, are you really for me? And out of that belief system, we will be like Sarah. We'll say, God, I heard that there was supposed to be a promise, but I can't wait. So we'll go cheaply producing Ishmael. We will create an alternative in our life to God. And then God will be break glass in case of emergency. It is just the human nature. It's the frailty of our mindset that produces that type of lifestyle. And it is not just because you're evil. It's not just because you're sinful. It is simply because, the, uh, simply because all of your life, the enemy has been doing a work on your mind, a work on your culture, a work on your family to really get you in a mistrustful relationship with God. Because he knows that if we ever fully give our life to God, the consequences of that doesn't mean you evil. Doesn't mean you bad. So I don't come with a message of condemnation, but it is to push us fully into the grip and the hold of God. God has done everything he possibly could to make sure that you and I have everything that we need to have a full and thriving relationship with him. So I want to share some things with you today. Listen, write this down. In dealing with God, in dealing with God, there are no limitations in him. We are limited. We are finite. We have an end. The word of God says our years are three score and ten. By reason of strength, we can get 80. You push past that, you're in the glory. So we have a limitation. But it's okay, because when I plug myself into God, who has no limitations, then all things truly become possible. All things are not possible for me without God. So we can quote, all things are possible, but if my life is not hid in Christ, that's not true. But once I'm hid in Christ, don't forget, he's the only audience this morning. When my life is hidden in him, truly all things become possible. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because God has set it up this way, it then proves to me that by God's nature, he is benevolent. In other words, his decision, his choice, his desire is for me to succeed. In every area of my life. You don't send your, your most prized possession, your son, in hopes that a person makes it. You don't send your best guessing that a person would make it. God took everything out of his 401k. He took everything out of his Roth IRA. He took all of the money from underneath the mattress. He took all of the money out of the piggy bank. He put it into one system and say, this is everything that I got. And his name is Jesus. So you and I can make it. There is nothing casual about God with me and you. So if there is something, if my relationship with God is casual, if my relationship with God, with God is cold, all it signals to me is that a check engine light has come on that says that an enemy has crept in. 
There is no such thing as a casual relationship with God. There's no such thing as a cold relationship. It, do, it doesn't exist. It's not God. It's what the Bible calls a form of godliness. You can walk around the, walk around the beautiful house with, with lights and lamps and, and paint and furniture on the inside. You can walk around it all your life but never have the key to go in. That's coldness. That's casualness. That's comfortability. That's not a real relationship with God. But the church has built religion around that idea. So some of us know that we're supposed to be somewhere else in God. And the struggle is hard to maintain our Christian perseverance because we are on the outside. That's why it's so hard to beat sin. That's why it's so hard to that's why it's so hard to overcome lust. Because you can't do it on your own limitations. You have to be connected to Christ. So we've preached people under the under the pews. We've preached people under the altars, but there was no real power. There was no real connection with Christ. And so people really didn't believe that God was for them in and out. I remember uh, my mom's not here, but she get a testimony all the time. I remember my mom used to be sticking a needle in her arm doing heroin. I used to be watching her as a kid and she used to be calling on God while she was getting high. I couldn't understand it as a child. Now I do as an adult and everything that I do. God is there. Everything that I do. I need God. While I'm sticking this needle in my arm, God, please don't let it kill me. See, we've been taught that God is just in the good part of your life. When you down, he's there. He's invested in my success even when I'm down. But we don't, we don't believe that. It's only when we're doing good that we believe that God is coming to my... Oh, he's a benevolent God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Even when I go through the valley, God is there. He's not just a mountaintop God. So you open up your mouth, even in the most despondent places of your, of your existence, even when the rent money is due, even when your, the guys walked out, even when the, uh, the resources didn't show up, even when you sick in your body, you still call on him because he doesn't change because you down. He's invested in my success even when I'm down. Please write that down. He's invested in my success even when I'm down. See, human beings enter into what we call a what we call stargate love. It's a familiar love. It's I can love you, but if you get too far down, I might not be able to help you. Because I'm busy helping myself. That's not evil. That's just human. But God enters in what we call agape love. At the worst part of your life, he can't fail. At the worst part of your life, he's still abil- uh, he's still available. Remember, the best ability is availability. Every human being doesn't have that potential. So I love people, but I trust him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to Jeremiah 29 and 11 for me. I'm, I, I want to really root this in your spirit because, I, because this church, we won't walk around with our heads down. We won't walk, we won't walk around uh, with a somber look on our face like there is no help. All right, all right. And by the way, God is not up there. He's in here. Listen, the word of God says in Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know, Greek word gnosos, that means an intimate relationship with you. This is not just something I know of my logic. This means that I've connected myself to this idea, to the fact that it's become one with me. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Say it the Lord, not your auntie, not your pastor, not your prayer warrior. Say it the Lord. What is his thoughts? My thoughts are always to give you peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Pastor, why do you bring up that scripture? That, that means anything that fights this idea, I can reject it like the mailman. You ever got mail that came to your house before and it had the wrong address and you got to put return to sender? Anything that fights this idea, I can reject it and return it to sender because it's not God's fault. So in other words, in other words, every day of my life, God is finding a way. He has created a system for me to be peaceful. You can't serve God happily without peace. You can't have a great marriage without peace. I don't care who you are. You can't work on your job without peace. Not and be effective. You can't parent absent of peace. Why is God so interested and invested in it? Because this is the baseline for success. You have to enter into peace before you get anything and able to keep it. Try going into a relationship and your, and your mind is always over the, all over the place. 
Try going into a, a, a relationship with any person that's always turmoil. You're always up. You're always down. Uh, anger and resentment and bitterness is the call of your day. See how long that relationship lasts. Do the same thing with money. So God says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. There are thoughts, and it's peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. So if God expects for my end to be peace, I should expect for my end to be peace. That's not hype. That's the word of God. So Isaiah 85 and 8, don't go there, just write it down. Isaiah 85 and says, I stand upon my tower, and I hear what God will say. And the Bible says, God will speak peace unto me. Peace is a language. I don't make decisions unless it's peace. If I don't get peace, I don't, I don't do it. I don't care how much money it is. I don't care who you are. I don't care where we are. If God doesn't give me peace, I know he said, I'm giving you peace. I won't even move. I don't move on relationships, friendships, unless I feel that peace. And if peace leaves me, I leave. It's a language. Hallelujah. Go to Ephesians 1 and 3. I want to, uh, I want to root your, uh, your faith in the word of God this morning, not in my opinion, because everybody has an opinion. Don't mean that it's right. Ephesians 1 and 3. This God... Is always with me. This God is always for me. I'm convinced of that. Ephesians 1 and 3. Listen, the word of God says, Blessed, blessed be the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all. Somebody say all. all. Come on, say it like you mean it all. All, all spiritual blessings. He hath Blessed me. My spiritual blessings are in heavenly places. Listen. In Christ. That's why I say a cold, casual, half-hearted relationship with God is dangerous. That's why Jesus said, you're neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. Therefore, I spew you out of my mouth. He said, I wish you were either on one side of the fence so I can, so I can uh, really give the fullness of, of my benefit package. But when, you, when you're on the fence, it's just like being cold. But no man in the kingdom of God, no woman in the kingdom of God receives blessings from God in their entirety. You can get mercy. God can give you grace. But spiritual blessings... Unless he's first in Christ. If you pursue blessings outside of Christ in this world, it's a price. The Bible said, what does it benefit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? So there are people who look blessed who have the resemblance of blessings, but because it wasn't forged through a relationship with Christ, there's a price for that. I know it's a hard lesson, but it's true. And so we admire those people because they have stuff that we don't have. And there's nothing wrong with having stuff. I like having stuff. But it's a problem when the stuff have me. And it's a problem if what I have didn't come through Christ. It came through manip manipulation. It came through stealing. It came through cheating. Those aren't blessings, and they're not from Christ. And so we have to recognize those things and say, the things that are in my life, are they mocking my blessing because I didn't get them through Christ? Because I can't have it both ways. I can't ask him to bless me. And then on the other part of my life, I enter into a system that does not represent him. It doesn't work that way. I cannot ask God to bless my marriage with Pastor T. But when Pastor T go to sleep, I go creep out of the house at night with my girlfriend. That what I'm doing, that's not in Christ. Oh, Pastor, I wish you just stay in your old business this morning. <laughs> go to 2 Peter 1 and 3. Stay in your own business, Pastor. It's okay. Y'all say it to me. My audience is only Christ anyway, so y'all can say what you need to say. But I'm going to give it to you. Second Peter 1 and 3. Somebody say he's with us. 
Listen, I want to show you something. So God makes this investment into people. And there's two things that have to happen in our life for God to be fully known, for God to be fully shown in our life. God is looking for somebody that he can put on public display to represent him in the earth realm. God is looking for somebody to put on public display to represent his presence. God is looking for somebody to put on public display to represent his image. The Bible says he's searching the whole earth, looking to and fro, looking for somebody to show himself strong in. I got that revelation at 19. I saw that scripture and I said, God, I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I come from nowhere. I come from the projects. I have a stutter. I dropped out in the eighth grade. I don't have the pedigree. I don't, I don't have the family background. I don't, I don't have the physical characteristics. I have nothing. But I saw that scripture. And then it led me to 2 Kings 3, where Solomon, who was like me, said, God, I don't have anything. He said, but God, I'll connect my life to you. And then God said, because you sincere, because you serious, he said, listen to me. Just don't get excited. Listen to what I'm saying. He said, he said, because you sincere, ask me what you will. Ask me. And Solomon got smart. He said, I'm not, he didn't, he didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for things. He didn't ask for clothes. I could have because I had none of that growing up. But I saw what he asked for. He said, God, give me wisdom and God, give me an understanding heart so I know how to navigate in and out of life. And God said, because you asked for that thing, I'm going to give you what you asked and what you did not ask for. And I saw it in the word of God. I said, God, I'm nothing. God, I'm nobody. Everybody walks past me in life. I go up and down the stairs of school and girls pick on me. I have nothing, God. But if this word is true, and if you said you know it, not a respect of persons, but a respect of principle, the same thing Solomon asked for, I ask for it now, God. I say, God, give me wisdom. God, give me an understanding heart so that I know walk, how to walk in and out of people. And God said to me, just like he said to Solomon, he said, I'm going to grant you that. And what you did not ask for, he said, I'll always make sure that you have the ability to prosper. Why? Because God is looking for somebody <clears throat> somebody to show himself strong again not just the rich not just the influential he's looking for the humble the willing look at your neighbor and say that's me listen you surveying your family you looking at your relatives And looking for somebody to save your family and God looking at you. You're looking at your relatives. You're looking at your family. You say, my auntie is the one that's the pastor. My uncle's the one that's the bishop. But God looking at you. Your great-great-grandparents saw a prophet coming down the family tree. They couldn't see the face. They couldn't see the gender. All they knew that God was sending a savior. And see, your and see your family overlooked you because you didn't have the pedigree, because you didn't have the education, but you because you didn't have the money, but you had a belief in God. So you can't sit back and wait. It's your time. So that's why God was sending you to a place like this. Little church on the corner. Not a lot of people. For a little short bald head got to tell you that don't waste another day of your time waiting for somebody else to do what God has called you to do. There's a reason why your Christian walk is hard right now. There's a reason why the enemy is fighting you. There's a reason he's fighting your marriage. There's a reason he's fighting your singleness. This fight, this fighting just because you just hear. Everybody around you in the unseen realm can discern who you are besides you. Everybody around you in the unseen realm, even the demons know who you are. You don't. And I'm just here to tell you God is with you. Your grandkids are waiting. Your nieces 
and nephews, why they keep hanging around you? It ain't just because you cute. I mean, you cute. Why you keep getting favor? Listen, why you keep not dying when you supposed to? Let me talk about me. Why I keep not dying when I'm supposed to? Bad decisions, for some reason, just don't seem to take me out. I take a lick and then keep on ticking. Why does God keep, keep giving me mercy when I don't deserve it? It's for a reason. It's not for you just to keep getting up every day and buying Coco Chanel purses. He's calling you. Second Peter 1 and 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things. Please write this scripture down. That pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. My last couple of minutes I want to talk about this scripture. Listen. The Bible says that God has given you and I. All things. He's given us all things. And then he clarifies it in the same verse what the all things are. Listen, this keeps you out of just um, cheaply walking into things like just the prosperity gospel. I don't have anything against prosperity because God desires for us to prosper. We should prosper. We should have things. But that should not be the focus of our life, just acquiring things. He's going to tell us what the all things are. So if I know what the all things are, I can put my life into perspective. Because sometimes we just don't know what to pursue. We say, well, God, I'm saved. I'm born again. I know I'm supposed to be doing something. So what should I be pursuing? Amen. He says, has given us to all things that pertain unto two things. Please write this down. Life. And godliness. Life. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. And godliness. Life and godliness. God desires that you and I have life and godliness. If you don't have the combination of both of these, you're not walking in dominion. If you and I don't walk in both of these, in both areas of our life, we're not walking in true dominion. What is life? Life are the things that pertain to your practical day-to-day -day situation. God knows you have rent. God knows you have a car note. God knows you have to have food on your table. God knows that you have to have clothes on your back. That's life. And God is interested in that. And there are some people who just have the godliness part down but don't have the life part down. And that doesn't bring God glory. It doesn't bring God glory the fact that you can't pay your bills. It doesn't bring God glory the fact that you don't have a vehicle to get around in. It don't make you a less of a Christian, but it's not God's full glory. And so sometimes when we, when we come into Christian circles and in church, we tell people that it's okay if you're living like that. And the reason that we say that is because we just don't have the full knowledge of understanding how to bring people into God's full prosperity. God suffers when you suffer. God hurt when you hurt. It brings God no glory when you can't, put, and you can't sign your kid up for a sport because you don't have the money. That's life. And he's concerned about life. I, I want to encourage you all. Uh, some of us in the church have been watching it. There is an app called The Chosen. Go watch that. Just download the app called The Chosen. It's a mini series on the life of Christ. But what I think it does a great job of, showing us how concerned Christ is about our day-to-day -day feelings, our day-to-day -day life. It hurts God when there's no food in your refrigerator to feed your kids. Yeah, prayer is important, but prayer, my food, and with food in my refrigerator is important too. Yeah, fasting is important, but fasting is important while walking in divine health. God concerned about my marriage. He don't want me and Pastor T getting into it. That doesn't bring him no glory. 
So there's something built in. I'm going to teach you in a couple of weeks. There's something built into God's word that brings me into life. And then the second part, Peter says, is godliness. Godliness has to do with my relationship with him, with my character, with my holiness, with my sanctification. Oh, I wish somebody would hear me today. So sometimes we come to church and we think that's the only part that God is concerned about. Just your godliness. And he's concerned about both. And there are some people who only walk in one. There are some people who are super godly, super spiritual, but they don't have any fruit. They don't have any manifestation that God is real. There's nothing in their life that shows that God is for them. And I'm not just talking about material stuff. I'm talking about being blessed. Write this down. This is what blessing is. Blessing is the ability to overcome adversity. Through Christ. Blessing is the ability to overcome adversity through Christ. I don't just have to have stuff to overcome adversity. But if, if, if stuff is what's needed, God will give it to me. God doesn't want me walking to work when he can give me a car to drive. So he'll bless me with a car. God doesn't want you living outside when he can put you in a house. So when I don't have those blessings, then my relationship with God gets tainted. And so we get, we get mad. Can I just tell y'all the calls I get? We get mad with God. We get irritated. We get angry and we get frustrated because we see unbelievers doing life using God's principles. They're evil, yep. They don't go to church like you, yep, but they use God's principles. So they have the life part. They have no godliness. But we got the godliness and forsake the life. Like Jesus is not concerned about your business. The devil is a liar. I write scriptures all over my mission statement. Bring Christ in. <laughs> Somebody say life, life. And, godliness. and godliness. He's concerned. He concerned he's concerned about both. Verse 4, and I'm in there. Listen, if we develop these two areas, and I'm going to spend time talking about these two areas as the series goes on. If we, are, if we develop these two areas, then we're able to partake of his promises and become epistles of his divine nature. You are an epistle that God is writing on. Listen, when I found this out, <laughs> Ooh, devil was in trouble. When I found this out, I said, first of all, when I found out God will use anybody who believes in him, I don't got to be eloquent. I don't have to be educated. He'll use anybody. When I found that out, that was rap number one. Number two, that God is waking me up every day trying to write on my life so somebody else can read it. I say, oh, my God, it's a rap. You mean you want to use me to show people you real? You mean you want to dress me so people know heaven is real? I wake up every morning looking for it. What we going to show today, God? We going to show prosperity today? Not today. We gonna, we're just going to show humility today. We show we going to do prosperity today? You show we ain't going to do. We do prosperity and humility. You're an epistle written of God. And, it, and God can't write on the canvas of your life if you're depressed, if you're stressed out, if you don't believe in him, if you're walking around with no faith, if you are half-hearted, if you're on the fence. He can't write what he wants to write. Amen. There's, that, that's the reason why some things haven't come into our life yet. Because those things that are in your life, I'm not going to read verse 4. Let me stop. Let me stop. Stand on your feet. Let me say this to you. 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 Us. 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 God has been so faithful to us, and he loves us so much. Listen to me. Look up at me. God loves us so much and has been so faithful to us that he hides stuff from us. That he keeps stuff from us. Because if you and me, if, if what we're praying for is over there, and over there requires a different me, 
if he lets me get it now, I'll ruin it. I'll lose it. So what he does is you will pray and ask and God won't move. He'll say, you can't bring that current version of you over here. So what he does is he just don't answer out of love, out of concern. And I don't think I shared this with you, Pastor T, but I was begging God for children. I say, God, I know she don't have all the stuff they say you're supposed to have to have kids. But I know what the words say. I don't care what the doctors say. And, we could, and she just couldn't get pregnant. And I couldn't understand it. Until I stand here today and understand, I couldn't have had kids back then. I was halfway ready when we had them. No, I really was halfway ready. I was typing on my laptop one day, and the boys was in the living room kicking the ball around. And Pastor T said, look, baby, the boy's kicking the ball. I was typing. I said, whoa. I said, yeah. I said, said, she said, you know who taught him how to do that? I said, no. She said, I did. I was too busy. And then Pastor Ford came to me one day. I hope he don't mind me saying this. He came to me one day and said, Pastor, in so many words, you got to get it, get it together with your boys. I said, man of God, you right. And from that day, I changed my relationship with my pastor can receive from anybody. But just because I'm no pastor, I don't mean that just mean I got more stuff to do than y'all. I'm more accountable for y'all's soul. I said, you right, man of God. I would have, so if, if you moving into some of the stuff you're asking for, right? listen, get ready. And he'll come when you get ready. He can't marry that current version of you. Man of God, he can't marry, she can't marry the current version of you. She going to walk out. She going to walk away. Get rid of that. The issue you got with your flesh, deal with it now. Yeah, yeah. Telling you what I know. If I didn't deal with some stuff five, seven, ten years ago, I'd be up in this pulpit releasing all them spirits over y'all. Uh-huh. Lust, perversion, adultery, homosexuality, whatever the devil wanted to throw. I dealt with that stuff back then. Lock myself into my room and say, everybody at the club, everybody hanging out, everybody at the party, but I'm going to sit in here for four hours, five hours till God deal with and crucify this flesh, not so I can preach, not so I can have money, so that God can be well pleased with me. I got a future and an expected end. And I sat there. Amen. Pastor Tia tell you, I just locked myself in the room and say, God, deal with this flesh. I can't take this current version of me into my future. For my kids, say. For my wife, say. Deal with it now. Deal with it. I know it's not a popular message. I'm trying to help you get what everything God got for you. Lift your hands. Father, I thank you, Jesus. For the Holy Spirit. In this place, oh God. We don't come to play. We come for you, Christ, that you would change us. You would help us today, oh God. I pray for myself. I pray for everybody in this congregation. Give me no words if I start singing. For everybody in this place, that you would touch us today, God. We believe for transformation. We believe for change. I know hearts are crying out to you today. I know there's people in this sanctuary, God, that say, God, if you don't help me now, I don't know where I'm going to end up. But you are a promise keeper. I believe in your divine power today to fall on the people of God. God, I know that this is true because you said Saul, as he turned away from the man of God, Samuel, you said that you gave him a new heart and he was turned into another man. Listen, that's the cry of some of you this morning. If that's you, I don't want you to come on. I just want you to lift your hand and say, God, I just need, you just need a new heart. You need God to change you today. That grace is in the house. Listen, that's what happened to me. I was getting ready to divorce Pastor T 13 years ago. I sat on the edge of my bed, and Pastor T was in the room crying, and I was sitting there trying to figure out a way to divorce her. I was trying to figure out a way to get out of what God had gave me. And the Spirit of God, if, I, if, if I'm telling you a lie, God, strike me down now. The Spirit of God visited me sitting on the edge of my couch. Wasn't no man, wasn't no therapist, wasn't no counselor. It was Almighty God. And He came on me and He changed my heart. He, cha- he made me a new man. Nobody did that but God. And some of you, that's what you need this morning. You don't need another sermon. You don't need another pill. You don't need another counselor. 
counselor. You need the Holy Ghost to come grab this heart and say, God, if you don't change me today, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to walk away. I'm going to go back into sin. I'm going to go back into pornography. I'm going to go back into fornication and adultery. I need a new heart. Ain't no man going to do that. Some of you already got, got it. God gave you a new heart. Pray for those that don't have it this morning. Come on, can we just begin to pray? Oh, Father, I thank you this morning, Jesus, for new hearts, for new starts. Hallelujah. Some of us need to go in the ICU. The intensive care unit that God would give us a heart transplant this morning. I believe by the integrity of your scripture. I believe by the power of the Holy Ghost that you're changing lives right now, Jesus. That you're shifting hearts. We need a revolution of our thinking, oh God. Some of us have straddled the fence, but you've called us to higher. We can't do with these old hearts, these old minds, God. So we believe by your love for us, by the compassion of Jesus Christ, that you would do this for us, oh God. Change us. Transform us this morning. Let your grace fall upon us. In the name of Jesus. Somebody is in the sanctuary. You don't have to point yourself out. Pastor I'm not going to point you out. But you're addicted to cigarettes. You've been trying to shake it. I decree and declare by the grace of God that he will come upon your life right now. And the spirit of addiction will be broken off of your life. In the name of Jesus. That God will take away the taste and the savor. I decree and declare if that's you this morning. That whenever you put a cigarette in your mouth it will make you sick. It will make you vomit until you stop. This morning, in the name of Jesus, if that's, if that's you, don't point yourself out. Just, just, just meditate in your heart and say, God, change me. Break it in the name of Jesus. Some of us have been cold and callous towards God. We've lost our prayer time. We don't fast anymore. We don't read anymore. You don't have to point yourself out this morning. Just tell yourself, say, that's me, God. But I want a new heart for a new start, God. Shift me around. I'm about to go back, God. I'm about to give up. I'm about to let loose. But I know you've called me. For such a time as this, my family needs me. My kids need me. Listen, some of y'all got friends around y'all. And the only reason they haven't fully converted yet is because you they're looking at you. You're God to them right now. They're looking at your life. They're looking at the epistle God is writing on you. I decree and declare that God would change your heart. Not by might. Not by power. But by his spirit, saith the Lord this morning. Saith the Lord, by his spirit. Just put your hand over your heart and say, God, give me a new heart. New heart, God. New heart. New heart. You can't, you can't father with the same heart that you got right now. New heart. You can't mother with the same heart that you got right now. Some of y'all have been calling to ministry. There's one of you in particular has been calling to ministry. And you've been running. I ask God that he would change your heart this morning. That wherever he's placed you to go, you will go accept your call. You will go accept your call. You will go accept your call. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, God just want me to do this this morning. If that's you and you just want a new heart, just come. God want me to lay hands on you. Just as a point of contact, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. And I said in my heart I wasn't going to do it, but I hear the Holy Spirit say, I need you to agree with my people. If that's you, I just want to. I just want to lay hands on you. Is that you, Pastor Ford? Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, the grace of God be upon your life. A new heart for a new start in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That God can see further than you can, man of God. In the name of Jesus. New heart for a new start. In the name of Jesus. New heart for a new start. I just want to agree with you. Some of y'all have already been crying out to God. God was sent a man serving. God was sent a woman serving to get an agree with, agreement with you and bring it to pass through prophecy. In the name of you, Jesus. That you, woman of God? Listen, your, let's lift your hands. You call the ministry? Look at that oil. You in ministry? You call the ministry, so you don't want what I'm talking about. Lift your hands. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Ephesians 4, 11, and 12 over this woman of God's life. And he gave some apostles, and he gave some prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, and for the perfecting of the saints, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, there's already been hands laid on her, prophecy already given to her, just like you did Timothy, you said I decree and declare, Paul said, 
by the prophecy that was given to you, by the laying hands of your, of your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, that you would come into the fullness of your ministry in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that over your life in Jesus' name. New heart for a new start, Sharonda. New heart for a new start. God will make you a, a general in the kingdom of God. He's just waiting for you. Listen, there's, listen, there are gonna, there's people that you can win on social media that would take me a lifetime to win by coming to church. Your influence is that wide. It's okay, be patient though. God's still working with you. I decree and declare a new heart for a new star for this woman of God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. New heart for they, those that are still here bearing with me. Thank y'all so much for your patience. I'm just want to be, I want to be obedient to what God is saying. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare Jude 1 and 24 over your life. And God is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy in the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord say this, to break, to break emotional strongholds in your life, the spirit of depression that desires to hover around your life. I hear the Lord say to dance in your house. It'll break it like David played the harp before Saul and that evil spirit would leave. The anointing is in your dance. So you don't have to be dressed up. You don't have to have on no, no, no outfit. Just when you feel it come, I hear the Lord say, just begin to break out into dance. And the anointing, like breaking the alabaster box, the anointing is going to flow from your dance. If you feel it in your atmosphere, just begin to dance. God is going on. He's going to anoint your dance. Amen. You believe that? Lift your hands. May grace be upon your dance right now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare the spirit of David over your life in the name of Jesus to dance before the Lord and scatter God's enemies in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, I feel new hearts in here in the name of Jesus. Some of y'all going to go back to work. They're going to be like, who are you? Who are you? New heart for a new start. Lift your hands, Mother, Mother Gwen. Grace. Grace for new heart for a new start. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare the ministry of laying on of hands that you shall break yokes, destroy the plans of the enemy over people's lives because God has anointed you for such a time as this. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. New heart for a new start, woman of God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I hear the word of the Lord concerning you uh, that he gave to Samuel. The Bible says he didn't let Samuel, not one of Samuel's words fall to the ground without him without God bringing it to pass. I decree and declare that whatever you speak, be careful what you say, woman of God. God not going to let anything you say fall to the ground. I decree and declare the spirit of Samuel to be upon this vessel of God in Jesus' name. And when she speak it, it shall come to pass. Why? Because you were not walking, you don't just walk in regular faith. You walk in the gift of faith. And there's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. The spirit of the Lord is upon you. To preach the gospel to the poor. To heal up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives, and to open the eyes of the blind. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you in the name of Jesus. Great grace be upon you, woman of God. Great grace. I feel the anointing in the place. Somebody give God a hand to pray for anointing, 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 anointing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Lift your hands, woman of God decree and declare a new heart for a new start. You really are getting a new heart this morning for a new start in the name of Jesus. The woman of God, I see you in the spirit holding on to God's altar, not letting it go in the name of Jesus. And I see you holding on to the altar out of fear. And I tell you, woman of God, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you won't have to fear any evil. I'm praying right now, God, by her faith, that you would release warring angels around her to protect her in the name of Jesus. You said in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 13, oh God, you said you have prepared ministering spirits, angels, for those who shall inherit eternal salvation. I thank you that her angels are fighting for her right now in the name of Jesus. I close every cor corridor, every portal into her life in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that she mount up on wings as eagles and that she shall run and not grow weary, walk and not faint in the name of Jesus. 
a garrison of fire. There's intercessors and prayer warriors in this house that are praying. Come on, begin to pray for this woman of God's future right now in Jesus' name. I'm praying for fire to be around your life to disintegrate all the plans of the enemy all the schemes of the evil one we protect you as a body this morning we are family in the name of you you are not alone the devil is a liar you have a spiritual family this morning and we pray fire around your life in the name of jesus fire around your life in the name of jesus i hear the lord telling me this morning sharing to, to tell you that there is a fourth man in the fire there is a fourth man in the fire for you this is not your end, just your beginning. The Lord will fight your battles. Don't worry. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all come up here for me. Great grace. Great grace. Where's that oil? Great grace. Great grace. Uh-oh, that's all right. That's all right. Great grace. Great grace. You come here. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for great grace upon this woman of God. In the name of Jesus, a new heart for a new start. In the name of Jesus, for raising her up for such a time as this, changing the elements for her life, giving her understanding, the spirit of revelation. We go past knowledge and understanding, but revelation to be her portion this morning in the name of Jesus to fill her belly with the word of God I see a Bible laying in your womb in the name of Jesus there's a Bible laying in your womb I hear I hear the Lord say she's desiring to know my word and I'm not going to leave her empty I'm not going to leave her void let that word rest in your belly out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water I thank you Jesus be upon this woman of God right now in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus for this great man of God make him Joseph God give him a new heart for a new start in the name of Jesus change the trajectory of his future in the name of Jesus order his steps in your word Lord God let his steps hallelujah be seasoned with oil in the name of Jesus like me God he needs a new mind a new belief in Jehovah, in Adonai, O God. Increase his faith in you, O God. Make him a leader of his family, a leader of his household, and a leader in the house of God. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Great grace be upon you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father God, for Trish this morning. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that you're changing her heart in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now, Lord God, that great grace is upon her life. Give her a hunger and a thirst after righteousness. I hear the Lord say, ask for the spirit of discernment. I hear you in your private time. You're talking to God, wanting to know the right thing to do. Asking God to, to help you not to make a mistake. You need the spirit of discernment for that. There are wicked and evil people, wicked and evil spirits. There's the spirit of error that creeps around the people of God waiting for a crevice and a crack. But we overcome it through the spirit of discernment. The spirit of discernment. The Bible says the sons of Issachar knew how to discern the times and the seasons. I decree and declare that same spirit be upon you, woman of God. The spirit of Issachar to discern people, their motives and their motivations in your life. In the name of Jesus. I even feel the spirit of prophecy on your life. Hallelujah. The grace that was on Mother Gwen's life to prophesy, it's fell on your life. It's fell on your life in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the spirit of prophecy to fall upon her life in Jesus' name. You see things in dreams and visions, it's not the devil, it's God. He's revealing what shall come to pass. So I need you to begin to speak what God say in this church. You hear me, Tish? I need you to begin to say what God show you. It's not the devil. It's not the devil. It's God showing you. We'll make sense of it as you release it. There's a spirit of prophecy on you. I didn't say, I didn't call you a prophet, but there's a spirit of prophecy that usually leads to, to the office of the prophet. There's a spirit of prophecy on you. I thank you, Father, that you'll be kept from error, that you'll only say what God has you to say in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's some gifts in this church. 
Bring her a woman of God. Come here, Lord. Just keep putting her right here. Lift your hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Great grace be upon your life in the name of Jesus. Royal priesthood. Holy nation. I see in the spirit realm, woman of God, you've come a long way back to God. I just see you walking down this long street. It's been a long, that's a long way to get back to God. But he gonna honor you this morning. He gonna honor you this morning. My God, you gave up a lot. <laughs> Jesus, you gave up a lot. But it's okay. The word of the Lord says, don't worry, those of you all who've given up houses and lands and cars for my sake and the gospel, the reward that comes behind it, man of God, I hear that for you too, what you've given up. God is really ready, ready to make you a real new creature. Heart transplant this morning. In the name of Jesus, every spirit that desires to pull this woman of God back into her past, we cancel your assignment. This is God's daughter. This is his child. Devil, you are a liar. You should have got her when she was out of covenant, but we wrap our arms around her in the spirit. We break every generational curse over her life in the name of Jesus. We call you Ruth in the name of Jesus. Let our obed Edom blessing be upon her business and her life. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost working on your mind and your heart. Begin to pray in the spirit. We're finna reverse generational curses over her life in Jesus' name. I confront every evil altar back five generations in her family lineage. In the name of Jesus, through the blood of Christ, evil altars that have been spoken over her destiny, that have desired to sift her as weak, but we have prayed for her that her faith fail not in the name of Jesus. We come with the blood of Jesus against every evil altar, every curse. We call her into covenant with Christ this morning in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that her womb is open to receive the things of God in the name of Jesus that whatever she puts her hands to shall prosper. God, I thank you right now, Jesus, that everything the enemy stole from her, that he has to return it back to her seven times in the name of Jesus. We raise up a savior in her family in the name of Jesus. I see that on your life, Yolanda. God has called you to help save your friends. They're looking at you as God. They're looking at you as helper. They're looking at you as the example. I mantle you with the anointing this morning in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you that you are a helper. I destroy evil altars over your life. And every wicked spirit that comes seven times stronger, we cancel his assignment by the authority of Jesus Christ and by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. You're an intercessor. Thank you. You are an intercessor. You're an intercessor. I destroy altars over your life by the authority of Jesus Christ. By the authority of Jesus Christ. God knows your needs. And he's a need meter. Pastor T, I want you to text this scripture to Yolanda. Isaiah 54 and 5. It says, the Lord thy God is your husband. He's your redeemer. I pray that God will keep you until your husband marches into your life. Raise your hand if you're single and you're still listening to me. I decree and declare that God is your husband. Men too. He's the many-breasted one. He will be your keeper until your spouse comes into your life. There are people that God, there are people that, that the enemy is sending into your life. The only reason he's sending them in 
because the enemy discerns your spouse in the future so he has to send you an Ishmael to 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 counsel the ministry of you and your mate but I decree and declare the spirit of discernment you'll see a serpent for who he is you'll see a serpent for who she is in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah glory to God hallelujah listen woman of God I don't know your name but I was praying the other day and I saw a person in a wheelchair to be honest with you I thought it was a guy named Fred that I was going to pray for I didn't know it was going to be you this morning so I already saw you in the spirit and I just want to pray for you because there's many things that will trouble your heart and right now you doubt but I don't need you to believe I'm going to release my faith into your life and the spirit of God is going to move upon your heart for you to start to believe again I know you've lost a lot of things but God is a God of restoration he's a God that can recover and all he's waiting for you to do woman of God is to come back with him with all your heart all your soul and all your mind. He's going to show you great and mighty things that you know not of. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what your family said. You belong to him. You belong to Jesus. You're his special child. You're his daughter. Amen. God, I don't know what the miracle is, but I know the miracle is for her this morning. I get an agreement with the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, can I touch you? In the name of Jesus. The love of God which passes all understanding shall guard your heart, woman of God, and keep you in the name of Jesus. I release every shackle that has bound you. Woman, thou art loosed. In the name of Jesus, whoever puts shackles, I see them in the spirit. They've been talking about you. They've been speaking evil against you. Oh, and then y'all help me pray. But in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I release, I release every cord, every chain, every rope that come through ill-spoken words, demonic principalities, family members that have put their mouth on you. I release you from every curse by the blood of Jesus. Woman of God, be loosed in your heart. And see the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ shine upon you this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God. Mother Gwen, come here. Just lay hands on her. Touch and agree with me in the name of Jesus. I, knew, I hear God say she need a miracle. I just don't know what it's for. He just, won't, he just didn't show me. He just told me you need a miracle. But I know Mother Gwen believes in miracles wholeheartedly. She has faith for it. So we get in agreement with for whatever miracle you need this morning. That it be upon your life. That it be granted to you. This morning in the name of Jesus. Amen and thank God. Great grace be upon you. Hallelujah. Don't give up on God, because God won't give up on you. Hallelujah. And great grace <clears throat> was upon God's people. Great grace was upon God's people. Are you able to take your hand off Mr. Bridget? If not, leave it alone. Just want to touch your head. In the name of Jesus, new heart for a new start. Thank you, Jesus. Move heart. Shout out. I hear the Lord say he's already started your new heart and your new start. We just need the grace to believe. The grace to believe. The grace to to believe the grace to believe Gideon don't take God much and I see in the spirit realm you like Saul hiding behind the stuff 
when God has already anointed you queen. So come out from behind the stuff and believe in God. It's not you doing the work. God is with you. He's anointed you for such a time as this. Your latter shall be greater than your former. Say it the spirit of the Lord upon your life. Go do great things, Minister Bridget. And I ain't talking about just in this church. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you for those who've been patient and stayed. Amen. Is that everybody? Yes. Right, uh, lift your hand, Pam. In the name of Jesus, I send great grace upon your life, upon your business. In the name of Jesus, that God will multiply the works of your hands, that you strive with all God's energy. And God will make you a sign and a wonder. I didn't say this. God's saying this. Make you a sign and a wonder in this generation for your family to see before you die. You will be a sign and you will be a wonder. Your grandkids will kiss your picture and thank God for the sacrifice that you made. If I be not a man of God, this world will see that. Your grandkids going to kiss your picture and say, thank God for grandmama. Oh, I feel that. I feel the Holy Ghost upon you, Pam. Shut up, I quote Tassata. I feel him reaching down into your future. Hey, shout out about Kota. It's been a great price paid by you, woman of God. Great price. Is that everybody? Thank y'all. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Lift your hands, Pastor Kenzie. New level, man of God. In the name of Jesus. All I've been hearing this week concerning you, man of God, that you chose Shout out by Kota Sata. Chosen. Chosen for such a time as this. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. I hear the Lord's made you like a, Naz like a Nazarite. Special vow before God. Certain things this man of God can't do. Listen, if, he, if, if there's anybody that you don't want to put your mouth on, it's him. I promise you that. Be careful what you say about that one. In the name of Jesus. Hey, I'm telling you what I see. Keep your mouth off him. Shut up. Sometimes God just look at people and say, leave him alone. Leave her alone. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophet no harm. Hallelujah. Is that everyone? Shokabra kasata. Is that everyone? Yes. Hallelujah. We need some more oil. Yeah, you supposed to already come. Hallelujah. And better late than never. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. 